Okay, so the late 13th century was a really, really dangerous time to be living in the Italian peninsula. There were warring families going back and forth, gang violence constantly. And these gangs wanted to grow their land, they wanted to increase the wealth that they got. They even wanted to control the papacy itself. Rome became something that they, these uh, gang families fought over, even to the point of there would be one pope from one family and another pope from another family. And in one instance, a pope was actually beaten to death. And so the Italian peninsula became a very dangerous place for the pope to be in. Uh, for about 30 years, we had an itinerant papacy in which the pope moved from castle to city to place to place throughout the Italian peninsula just to say, stay safe. But after the one pope was dead, the new pope decided that he would move the papacy to what he thought would be the absolute safest place on the Italian peninsula, and that would be southern France. Prince Philip the Fair of France recreated the papacy here in Avignon. because nothing says the Pope is the infallible word of God better than the largest Gothic castle ever built. So seven different popes are going to live in this palace in Avignon, and this is going to upset the people of the Italian peninsula quite a lot. It's also going to be a question of the pope, his official title is the Bishop of Rome. Well, if the pope doesn't live in Rome, how can he be the Bishop of Rome? Also there's a political maneuver here. The pope who built the castle at Avignon was a friend of the King of France. And the next six popes are going to be French popes, not Italian popes. And they're going to be choosing French bishops. So the Catholic Church is looking like, politically, it's being taken over by the French crown. And so what we find is that the Italians are pushing to have the pope come back. Gregory XI moves back to Rome in 1377 and proceeds to die a couple of months later. The Italians surrounding the Papal Palace are insisting the bishops inside elect an Italian Pope, which they do. But the bishops are mainly French, and what they're going to do is sneak out of the Papal Palace and they're going to come back here to the safety of the castle in Avignon and declare to the world that they elected that guy down in Italy under duress. They were going to kill the bishops if they did not elect an Italian Pope. So the bishops here in Avignon are going to gather, they're going to say, well, that guy we elected down in Rome is illegitimate, he's not the real pope, we're going to vote in a real pope. And they do, a French pope. And now we have two popes. And this is called the Great Western Schism, in that we have a pope in Rome, and he's got supporters, not just in the Italian peninsula, but the English are supporting this pope. And then you've got the French Pope. He is supported by France and several other kingdoms in Europe. So this arguing back and forth is going to, of course, enrage the Holy Roman Emperor, who's kind of trying to work between these two popes. And so he calls the Council of Pisa in 1409 with the express idea that he's going to gather all the head churchmen, they will come and they will vote on a new pope, take the titles away from the old guys. And so they do. But the other two guys refuse to step down. 
And now, in 1409, that great schism of two popes becomes the great schism of three popes. And in fact, the French pope, he's, who is here in Avignon, is going to be besieged by an army led by the pope that was elected in Pisa. And that siege is going to last several years. Sigismund, the Holy Roman Emperor, has had enough with this very embarrassing, very bloody and violent schism between the three popes. And so he called the Council of Constance in 1414. The emperor is going to force all three popes to give up their papal crown on pain of being arrested, of being put in prison. By 1417, the Council of Constance was over and we were back to one pope. And that pope lived in Rome. This building took on several different jobs. When the castle was built in the early 1300s, it was pretty safe. But once gunpowder came into use, these walls were pretty useless. During the French Revolution, a group of Catholic priests took refuge here inside the castle. And unfortunately, those Catholic priests found out how useless those walls were because the, they would be found by the local citizens and thrown off one of the towers. <laughs>